Um, so today's session is not going to be quite as intense as, as some of the sessions we've done in, in, in previous weeks. Um, I want to concentrate today on some mobility exercises. I'm going to do the um, little sequence of exercises for your shoulder mobility. So if you've had, ever had problems with your shoulders, such as rotator cuff or frozen shoulders, anything like that, we're going to do, we're going to do um, that little sequence. Um, and then we'll do some sat down exercises using the resistance bands for our legs. Um, so you'll need your resistance band. You'll also need some small weights, your, you know, your tin cans or your, if you've got some little dumbbells or um, bottles of water quite work quite well. But if you're using bottles of water, make sure they're the same weight, so the same type of bottle and you've got the same amount of water and don't have like one half or one half empty. That would be the same then, wouldn't it? <laughs> right. Oh, move. I've tried to move me, me thing a little bit closer so you can see me today because we're not doing any standing up stuff. So let's do a, a little posture. So just sitting on the edge of your chair, so just shuffle yourself forward so you're self supporting. Try and find the bony bits. So move the bony bits out, uh, sorry, move the fleshy bits out, out of the side of your, of your bum. Both feet flat on the floor. You can keep your hands nice and relaxed. Think about where your tailbone is. So your tailbone should be. Should be pointing down and then we're just going to think about our posture so we're, we're going to try and lengthen our spine we're going to try and grow our spine and each part of your vertebra think about creating space between each part of your vertebra and then feel yourself lengthen we've got that imaginary piece of string that's pulling us up towards the ceiling so we feel like we're six foot tall and we're going to lift our shoulders up roll our shoulders back and then just let them drop slightly so your chest feels like it's a little bit more pronounced and you feel like your shoulders are being pulled back a little bit and then we can slouch and everything collapses in our middle and in, in, our, in our chest. We'll do that again so we're, we're imprinting that sensation of that posture into our memory for the, for the next hour. So our, our sit bones, our tailbone, our lower back, our middle back and our upper back all lengthen. We're thinking about creating that space between each part of our vertebra. So we're nice and tall. Top of our head being pulled up towards the ceiling. And then shoulders up. Roll our shoulders back and then just let them drop. And then think about how your body's feeling right now. Imprint this sensation into your mind so that you can recall it later on when we're doing our exercises. That muscle memory we've spoken about before. And then we can relax. Give your hand a shake. Give your hand a shake. Fingers in and out. And then twist him. Fabulous. Relax there. Shoulders up and down. And then roll your shoulders backwards. And roll your shoulders forwards. Lovely. So we're going to do these hip circles that we've done, we've done a couple of times. So we're going to put our hands on our knees. We're going to try and keep our back straight. And then think about moving, doing these hip circles, but doing them from the hips and the lower back. And you can use your hands to, to help you maneuver around. So just take it nice and steady just to start off with. Try and keep both parts of your bum flat on the chair. Don't be tempted to lift one, of your, one part of your bum as you rotate round. And as I say, try and get right down into your lower back and into your tummy. If you feel as you're rotating around, there's a little bit of tension, some stiffness, and you just want to slow down to try and ease out that, that stiffness as you rotate around, then please do. But we're not, we're not doing um, the hula hoop here or anything like that. We're just going nice and steady, just trying to um, ease out that stiffness because it's early morning. You might not have been up for very long or might not have moved around too much yet this morning might just have that little bit of residual stiffness. And we're going to go back around in the other direction. And again, just slow it down, just stretching out any parts of that lower back through the rib cage that you think might just need a little bit of an extra stretch this morning. Trying to get as low down in your torso as you can. You're not just moving your head and your shoulders around. You want, the, you want to concentrate on the lower back and the hips. Fabulous, and relax there, just come back to centre. Right, let's get that heart rate going. Let's get the circulation going. So marching on the spot, and as always, nice and light on the toes, nice and purposeful with the arms. Still sitting up nice and tall. We haven't slouched forward. 
trying to keep that back tall. I know it's a little bit tricky when you're moving, when you're moving your arms and legs around to think about posture, but we can try. And in that effort of trying, we do actually improve our postures. So we're just going at a brisk walking pace, just to start off with. Easing into the day, easing into the session. All right, let's just reach it out, just nice and easy. Just getting the movement through the arms and through the shoulders. Slowly bringing that heart rate up to an acceptable level. It's nice and rhythmical. Remember, if you need to have a rest, please rest. If you need to modify the exercises slightly, um, whatever it is, whether it's the warm up or the, the main, main bulk of the exercises, if you think there's something you can't do or you're not happy doing, and you find that there's a, just a, a little modification that you can add just to make it a little bit easier for you, then, then please do. All right, let's go back to normal marching. So making sure those elbows are going behind you, keeping nice and strong in the arms. All right, mind those shoulders as you stretch up. And just nice and easy. If you're not quite up to, to full speed at the moment and you're just kind of doing a smaller movement, not quite as vigorous, that's okay. And we're going to reach forwards. And we're going to reach up. Stay nice and light on those toes, reaching forwards. And back to normal marching. Lovely, okay, let's see the legs. So we're gonna extend each leg forwards and backwards and we're gonna reach with the heel. So dabbing the heels down. And again, just um, keep it nice and, nice and strong with the arms. And hopefully you are managing to alternate those arms and legs. When we do eventually get together in, in person, I expect every one of you to be able to do opposite arm and leg. And woe betide anyone who TikToks who does the same side. <laughs> All right, keeping the legs doing what they're doing, but your arms are gonna stretch up. And your arms are going forwards. And your arms are stretching up. So if you feel those shoulders are warming up slightly and you can get a little bit more of a stretch up, then please do. I'm reaching forwards. So we're going to extend our reach forward now, so a bit more of a rotation, more of a twist through the upper body, through the shoulders, through the back. And we're just going to go back to our kind of normal arms because this time we're gonna dab the toes down. So we're gonna extend the legs, but reach with the toes. So we get more of a stretch through the um, top of the foot and the ankle. We're gonna go back to heels. And back to toes. And back to heels. Marvelous, normal marching. Hands up again, just give those hands another shake. And up and down, nice loose wrists. And twisting, fingers in and out. Keep those feet going, back to marching. Right, let me come round here. Right, toe tap side to side, I'm out of the way. With your arms, so posture again. Are you still sat up nice and tall? Right, keep the legs doing what they're doing, but your arms are going to stretch up. And you're going to push those hands away, out to the front. And we're going to go back to curls. And we'll do some funky chickens. And we'll go back to curls. Who knows what's coming next? I don't know. We're going to stretch up, I think. And we're going to go back to funky chickens. And curls. And chicken. And curls. I'm pushing away. I'm reaching up. It's a good job I'm not asking you one arm to do one thing, the other arm to do the other thing. I'd end up confusing myself, I think. Pushing away. And chicken. 
ankles. Marvellous. Back to normal marching. Still sitting up nice and tall. Think of your postures. What we talked about at the start, that muscle memory. All right, we're going to slow it down. Just your heels up and down. A little bit of a swing of the arms. Okay, a little bit with the hips, but we're going to slow it down. We're just going to lift the knee up as high as you can, just so that you are using the front of your thighs, front of your hips. So just nice and steady, lifting up a knee as high as you can. Marvellous, and relax there, sitting up nice and tall. Right, so what we'll do, let me just come round here. Um, we'll do some press-ups. We'll go all the way out and we'll come all the way back. So I want, to, I want you to think about stretching out your chest when you pull back, stretching out your back when you push away. And as always, trying to get that biggest range of movement you can through the body, through the upper body in particular, as you reach forward and come back, really stretching out both directions. And steady there, let's do some twists. So one arm on top of the other. Again, sitting up nice and tall, and then moving, think about your waist, think about your lower back, rotating round as well. Trying to get that nice twist through the whole of the spine. Nice and easy, don't just be pushing your elbows from side to side. Think about the whole upper body. We're going to increase that, so as we go round, we're going to extend that arm behind us. We're going to look at that hand as far as we can, come back to centre, and then the other side. Just alternating, trying to get a little bit more of a rotation, a little bit more of a twist. Keep looking at your hand as you go, as you turn around. Just so that your head's not going in one direction and your body going in another for this particular stretch. Okay, one more on each side for me, nice and easy. When you've done your one on each side, just come back to the centre and just give your shoulders a bit of a shake. So make sure you're still sat forward on the edge of your chair. We're going to drop the hands down by the side and we're going to roll our shoulders back. So we're going to do some side bends now. So an arm. You're going to drop towards the ground, keep both parts of your bum flat on the chair, just until you feel a stretch through the opposite side body. And then we're going to come up and across to the other side. So we're moving laterally here, we're moving sideways. We're not trying to kind of, you know, gain an advantage by, by rotating kind of here with this, this shoulder dropping towards the ground. We want to keep this shoulder nice and high. And this, this arm is dropping towards the ground. Cross to the other side. Again, keeping the shoulder high. We're not letting the shoulder drop forwards, twisting. And across to the other side. Okay, we're going to add the additional bit. So as we go over the top arm now, we're just going to touch the temple just to increase that stretch down that side body. This arm towards the ground is still hanging heavy. Now squeeze your tummy muscles to come up. And as you go across to the other side, same again. Just a deeper stretch through that side and through the rib cage. Squeeze your tummy muscles to come up. We're going to do one more on each side. Squeeze up and over towards the other side. Squeeze those tummy muscles to come up. Just give your shoulders a little bit of a shake. A little bit with the legs. So our, our leg, we're going to lift up. And just a little bit of a kick forwards and backwards. Just getting some movement through the knee. Don't worry too much about it if you're not able to fully extend that knee just yet. A little bit with the ankle, up and down. So just flexing from the ankle joint. And same again, from the ankle joint, going from side to side. Try to avoid the temptation to move the whole of the leg from side to side. I just want the movement to be from the ankle. And then circles. Same again, it's just the ankle that's moving around. We're not moving the whole leg. Just want the ankle to loosen up and relax there. Let's do the other legs the same again. So swings forwards and backwards. So feeling it through the thigh and into the hip, as well as keeping that movement in the knee joint. And just the ankle again, so up and down. And then side to side. And circles in one direction and circles in the other direction. 
and relax there. A little bit with the hips, I'm not going to spend too, too long. Um, so feet together, knees together, just sitting up nice and tall. We're going to alternate, so we'll do one one side and one to the other side. So we're going to lift up, out, down and in. Other leg, up, out, down, in. Other leg, up, out, down, in. And opposite, up, down and in. Other leg, up, out, down and in. Last one, up, out, down and in. Right, we're going the other direction. Again, alternating. Uh, we're going to start off on this leg, so we're going to slide, lift, in, down. Other leg, slide, lift, in, down. Slide, lift, in, down. Other leg, slide, lift, in, down. Last little sequence, slide, lift, in, down. Slide, lift, in, down. I don't know why I couldn't say the word slide there. A bit weird. Right, touch your shoulders, sitting all nice and tall. We're going to roll those elbows around. So again, just trying to get movement through the shoulder joint. It's nice and easy, keeping things loose. And then slowly back round in the other direction. Lovely job. And relax there. Feet together, knees together, hands on knees, sitting up nice and tall. We're just going to finish off. Just get that heart rate back up. We're going to do a couple of bits of star jumps. So both feet are going to jump out to the side and then jump back in. We're not sliding or dragging our feet. Make sure the knees are also going out. And once you're into your rhythm, hands. So we're going to bring the hands up about the same height as your shoulders. So we're just going to go nice and slow just to start off with, just to let you get into the rhythm. Don't worry, I'll make this harder. I'll make it a bit faster. You can count on that, can't you? You know the score. You've been doing this with me long enough now. All right, we're going to do five big ones where we reach up with our hands. All right, wait for it. Wait for it. Here we go. One. Reach it up. Two. Three. Four. Five. Normal height star jumps. <coughs> Normal height. Normal height. Another five. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Normal height. Normal height. Come on, stay with me. Stay with me. Here we go again. Wait for it. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Normal height. Normal height. Normal height. Last five. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Normal height. Normal height. Right. Stay with me. Stay with me. I want you to make sure you've got some space to the side. To your side. Right. You ready? Ha <laughs> ha ha ha. Out to the side. So one arm goes to the front, one arm goes to the side. Just be careful of anything you've got to the side, whether it's the wall or your, your cabinet with your Fabergé eggs, the Swarovski crystals. <laughs> All right, both to the centre, both hands to the centre. Out to the side, centre, side, centre. You got it. You got it. Both to the centre. To the centre. Slow it down. Slow it down. And relax there. Give your shoulders a bit of a shake. Sorry, a bit cheeky on me. Never mind. You'll be all right. Give your arms, give your shoulders a bit of a shake. <clears throat> right, you'll need your weight. You'll need your weight. <clears throat> or you'll need one weight, I should say. You'll need one weight. So, if you have had any issues with your shoulders, rotator cuff, uh, an injury, you may, you know what, you may have had a, a break on your in, on your humerus or in your shoulder joint. Even if you've had something like a frozen shoulder, then these are exercises for you. You don't need to use a weight. You can do it without the weight. So obviously, it depends on how your shoulders are feeling. 
Um, I, but also it'll give you an idea. You might not realize you've got a shoulder injury or you've got some stiffness in your shoulder. You might not realize that until you start to do some of these exercises. Um, right, so you'll just need one weight just to start off with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off with this hand, actually, so, I, so I, can, I can sit side on. So what I want you to do, the first one, I want you to hold your weight by just kind of shimmy around in various directions. Um, I want you to hold your weight so you've created a 90 degree, bear with me just a moment, bear with me. Oh, there we go, that's a bit better, isn't it? So, <coughs> excuse me. I want you to hold your weight so you've created a 90 degree angle with your elbow and your elbow's tucked into your side. And you're going to hold the weight, whether it's your tin can, whether it's your bottles, bottles of water, whether it's your weight, or even if you're not using a weight, your fist or your hand is in a, an up and down position. You, you haven't let, twisted your hand horizontally. So you want a vertical, a vertical position here and you're going to sit up nice and tall. So what you're going to do with this weight, keeping your elbow tucked in, is you're going to bring that arm, that forearm, across the front of your body, and then come back to that start position. So keeping the elbow tucked in, but your forearm comes across the front of your body. So if you haven't got any issues at all with your shoulders, you might find this a doddle. All right, but that doesn't matter because what we're doing is we're maintaining the health of our shoulders. If your shoulders are good, these are exercises to maintain good shoulder health and good mobility in the shoulder. So it's a form of prehabilitation. So if, you, if, you don't, if you're not injured, you want to maintain, you, you want to be injury free. So it's called prehabilitation rather than rehabilitation. So it's just nice and smooth, coming across, and then coming back to that start point. Now, if you can't get all the way across, if you just get it part way, for example, like this, that's fine because of that, that potential injury that you may have in your shoulder. But we're, we're, what's happening is, is we're, we're rotating at the top here. We're not moving the elbow. We're not rotating from the elbow because your elbows don't, don't go that way. Your elbows go up and down. But your shoulder's got quite a, a wide range of movement. And you're using slightly different muscles here than if we were doing, for example, a shoulder press. So we're coming across and then back to center. We're just gonna do one more and then back to center. And then just relax there and give your shoulders just a bit of a shake. Staying on the same side. So again, it's the same start position. So that elbow's tucked in. You've got your 90 degree angle, which we're going to try and maintain through this second exercise. So this time, we're going to rotate in the other direction. We're going to rotate away from the body and then back to that start position. Rotate. So my elbow stays close in, but I'm rotating now away from my body. And as I rotate, I'm still trying to keep that 90 degree angle in my elbow. Now some people have wonderful flexibility in their shoulders and might get right out here. Now I can't do that. You can see I'm, I'm kind of cheating just a little bit to try and demonstrate that my, that my arm is going all the way out there. I don't want to cheat. I want to keep my chest and my shoulders pointing forwards and just allow the rotation to come from the shoulder joint. I don't want the rotation to come, to come from my waist. That makes sense. So coming back in and then back to that center point. Remember, if you're thinking, Do you know what, this is really troublesome for me, and you're using your weight, then just put your weight to one side and do it without the weight. All right, again, we're just going to do one more. And then just drop that weight down and give your shoulder a shake. There are another two exercises to do but I'm going to come back to them in a minute. So what we're going to do is do the other arm. So basically this, this shoulder is just going to get a little bit of a rest. And we're going to do those first two exercises on your other arm so that you can sense the difference between, between each, each shoulder. You might have one, one good shoulder and one not so good shoulder. So you've got your weight. We've tucked our elbow nice and close into our body. We're trying to maintain this 90 degree angle between the 
forearm and the upper arm. So we're going to do that internal rotation. So sitting up nice and tall, and then you're going to bring that, that forearm across the front of your body and then back to the start position. So across the front and back to the start. Try to keep that 90 degree angle throughout. We're not, we're not dropping the arm. We're not allowing the elbow to come out to the side. We're not doing anything crazy like this. It's not a fancy movement. It's not a particularly um, complicated movement on, on face value. Um, but still, it, it can, be easily, um, can be easily done wrong. So just nice and controlled, still maintaining that vertical position with your fist to come across and back to the start. Keeping that elbow tucked in, maintaining that bend in the elbow. And as I say, those, those muscles deep inside your shoulder joint that can help keep the shoulder stabilised. That's what's working right now. Okay, just one more for me. And then come back to the centre and just put your weight on your lap and just give your shoulder just a little bit of a shake as we move on to the second one, which is the external rotation. So again, our start position is our elbow tucked in. We've got our 90 degree angle. We're sat up nice and tall. And this time we're trying to move the weight away from the body, but keeping the elbow tucked in. We're keeping that bend in the elbow and then back to the start. So rotating outwards without cheating. We're not turning the waist. We're not turning the chest. We want the rotation, that external rotation to come from the shoulder. Remember, just rest if you need to have a rest or put the weight down or slow it down or do three or four movements, have a rest, and then do another three or four movements, whatever works for you. Lovely. Just one more for me. Nice and controlled. And then back to that start position. You can drop that weight down and give your shoulders a bit of a shake. And then put the weight into your other hand. Okay, so a little bit trickier now, the next two. Um, so by all means, dispense with the weight if you need to. All right, so our start position is exactly the same as the previous two exercises. Fist position is vertical, our elbow is tucked in and we've got our 90 degree angle in our elbow. So we're going to maintain this 90 degree angle, we're going to maintain this 90 degree angle. But our fist position, our elbow position is going to change. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about where the elbow is and we're going to move the elbow so it becomes level with your own shoulder and the fist now is horizontal. And then we're gonna bring it back in. So we've got this rotation, this coming out to the side and back in. So I'm always keeping this 90 degree angle in my elbow, but my fist position goes from vertical to horizontal. And I'm bringing that elbow and therefore my fist, the same height as my shoulder. So a little bit more challenging, I think, this particular exercise compared to the other two. But again, hopefully it's giving you a sense of how your shoulders are. Now, if you can't bring your arm to this position, if you're only getting part way, you're only, you're only able to come out, I don't know, 45 degrees rather than the full 90 degrees, don't worry too much about it because this is something that, that can be improved. You can improve the range of movement and the strength through the shoulder. Okay, just one more for me. And then coming back down. Okay, give your shoulders a shake. We're going to do the same on the other side. So just switching that weight across to the other side. Again, just giving your, your shoulders just a chance to recover in between the exercises. So again, your start position is the same, elbow tucked in, you've got your 90 degree angle, and your fist is in that vertical position, and we're going to sit up nice and tall. So now we're going to think about that elbow rotating out and up, so it becomes the same height as your shoulder. Your fist 
becomes the same height as your shoulder, but I've still got my 90 degree bend in my arm, and I'm going to come back down. So rotating and then back down. So raising and rotating. The fifth position goes from vertical to horizontal and then back down. So you might be realizing that you're stronger on one side compared to the other, or it's easier. You're getting less fatigued on one side compared to the other. That's natural, I'm afraid. Uh, we often have these imbalances in our body. It's just understanding that as well. And then we can work on those imbalances and just make sure we are better balanced. Beautiful. Just one more for me. And then coming back down and relaxing the head. Just give that shoulder a shake and then switch the, the um, weight across to the other side. So this is our last one for the rotator cuff. Um, so we've just, done, we've just done this one, haven't we? We've just done this. So our start position for the next one <coughs> is the, this position here. So let me come, come up here. So my elbow and my forearm my fist are the same height as my shoulder and I've got my 90 degree angle in my elbow and my fist is horizontal so my fist is going to stay horizontal now as I rotate this way so I'm maintaining this 90 degree angle as I go from as I bring my fist from shoulder height to head height yeah have you got that tricky one this one tricky one this one so I'm just going to move my body position around so you can see different angles my elbow is almost staying at the same height and the same position but I'm still just rotating from the shoulder joint trying to keep that 90 degree angle in my arm at all times Remember, you don't need to do this with a weight if, you, if it's tricky, if you just want to do it without the weight. Okay, just one more for me on this side. And then gently just bring that arm back down. Give that shoulder a shake. Okay, last one on your other side. So just switching that, that weight across. Just sitting up nice and tall. So remember, we're going to come up to this, which is our start position. So we've got our 90 degree bend in our arm, our elbow and our fist, our shoulder height, and our fist stays horizontal here as we rotate upwards. Yeah, have you got that? Keeping that bend in the elbow, I'm just trying to keep that fist, that weight horizontal, so we don't want our weight kind of dropping this way or this way. Or twisting that way. Hopefully you are feeling that through those shoulders. You're feeling your shoulder working differently. Might not necessarily be hard, but you just think, oh, that's different. So you appreciate you using slightly different muscles. All right, one more for me, and then we'll give these shoulders a rest. Once you've done your one, just bring your arms down, give your shoulders a shake, and then just put your weights to one side out of the way. Right, I'm just going to need to reposition my box. Right, so you'll need your resistance band. Let's give the shoulders a bit of a rest. We're going to do a little bit with the, um, with the legs. You might be pleased to know. Right, so just before we use the band, the first exercise we're going we're gonna to do is for our thighs. And it's going to help strengthen around the, around the knee joints as well. So I know one or two of you have had problems with your knees in the past. This might not be the most comfortable exercise for you, but what I'm trying to do is help to, to keep the thighs, keep the thigh muscles, your quadricep muscles nice and strong to help alleviate any pressure on the knee joint itself. So pressure being taken onto the thigh muscles rather than through the knee joint. Okay, so let me, uh, I'll be moving around in various positions. So you're gonna start with your feet together, knees together. 
try and sit on the edge of your chair for me. Okay, we're going to try and keep the knees level and a leg, I don't mind which, you're going to extend and try and straighten that leg but keep your knees at the same height. We're trying to avoid the temptation to drop, to drop the knee and then we're going to come back. So just the same leg, try and straighten, try and point your toes up towards the ceiling and then bring it back. You should feel straight away, you should feel this thigh muscle here work. You should feel it contract. It might feel uncomfortable. I just want you to take your time. I'm not going to spend ages doing this. I just want you to feel those thigh muscles. We're straightening as much as we can and we're bringing it back to the start. Try and point your toes up towards the ceiling and then back down. Marvellous. We're just going to do one more. One more for me. Lovely. Okay, and relax there. It's enough, isn't it? You can instantly, the first one you do, you think, mm, yeah, I can feel that. Let's do the other one. So again, just try and keep your knees level. So straightening the leg and then bringing it back to the start. And again, try and point your toes up towards the ceiling. Try and keep your knees level. We don't want to drop the knee. We don't want our knee going up and down. We want to keep it the same height. I'm feeling these thigh muscles contract. There's no weight. We're not using weights. We're not using the band or anything like that. And yet that's quite an, an intense um, exercise. It's quite an intense sensation that you're feeling through the thigh. Okay, one more for me. Marvellous. And relax there. I know someone who doesn't like that exercise. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. <laughs> Take your band. All right, time's pressing on, isn't it? Blimey. There's loads I haven't done. We're not going to get through my list today, by the way. So a little bit with the calves. It's been a while since we've done this particular exercise. Um, so always take the ends of your band, you've created your loop, and you're going to drop that loop around your foot. Now try and position the band around the ball of your foot rather than the middle, rather, rather than the sole of the foot or the heel. Try and get it around certainly the top third of your foot. So this is going to strengthen your calf muscles. So what I want you to do is I want you to walk your hands down your band so you have got some tension on your band. Pull that band nice and tight. Your foot's come off the floor and now we're going to point the toes and then allow the toes to come back as far as you can so as you we're stretching. So as your toes come back, try and point them up towards, towards your face. Let the band help to get a deep, really deep stretch and then push against the band. So this is when you push away, when you, when you point your toes, you are strengthening your calf muscle. But then when you allow your foot to come back, you're getting that really deep stretch through the calf and into the Achilles as well. Nice and controlled. You can always add more tension, more difficulty, if you want to, by just moving your hands further down your band. So just take it nice and steady. And think about the range of movement you're able to achieve with your ankle. The bigger the range of movement, the more your muscles are working as well. More bang for your buck. Marvellous. Okay, so just relax there, but keep the band where it is. You can drop your foot down towards the ground. Give yourself a little bit more slack. So we're going to do the leg press. So foot comes off the ground. You're going to hold your hands near your waist. Try and sit up tall. I know this one's a tricky one. You're going to bend your knee, bring that knee up as high as you can, and then push against the band. So high knee, drive that foot down and away. So when we do this one, remember we're trying to be, um, trying to um, um, move the knee in a straight line, straight up and straight down. We don't really want the knee coming out to the side. If you want to make it a bit harder, <clears throat> move your hands further down your band. Nice and high and push down. So this one, there is work being done by the thigh muscles again, through the hip and the bum. But actually we're also improving our mobility in the hip joint because you, the band's helping you to lift this knee up really high, which you wouldn't normally be able to do. All right, one more for me. Fabulous. Okay, so just relax there. Put your other foot into your band. 
and take your tired leg out. Walk your hands further down your band so you've got some tension. We're going to do the calf one first of all. So remember, we point the toes and then allow the toes to come back up and point towards your face. So push, push your toes away, toes up towards the face. The movement is in the ankle. Hopefully you've got that band, I forgot to mention, hopefully you've got that band around the top third of your foot, around the ball of your foot. <clears throat> if you need to make it a little bit harder, just walk those hands further down your band. But think about the stretch, think about the press. Okay, one more for me. Tip top, good, relax there. Just put that foot down. Again, just give yourself a little bit more slack as we do the leg press. So hold in your band, sorry, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit uneven here. Hold in your band up high, near, near your waist. Foot comes off the ground, we're gonna bend the knee, Nice and high, and then push against the band. Nice and high, and then drive down. Try and extend that leg as much as you can. And as before, we're trying to make it nice and straight, like a piston. A straight up, straight down movement. Keeping that knee going in a straight line. Make it harder by walking your hands, just a couple, couple more inches down your band. Pushing away, just making those thigh muscles and your bum work just a fraction harder, but also helping you to lift that knee up even higher to increase that range of movement. I think we'll do one more, always one more. Beautiful. And relax there. So, take that band from around your foot. We're going to do a little bit with this, with the hips. I, don't, there are, I know I'm a little bit pressed for time, but there are two exercises I'd like to do. So let's do the, the hip rotation. So what I want you to do is put your feet together, knees together, take your band, lay it over your thighs, lift your heels up, and then pass the band underneath, crossing it over, and then bringing the ends up to the top. So there should be tension in that band. You shouldn't have a floppy bit at the top here. Should be nice and nice and snug. So I'll just go through that again, just in case you didn't quite catch it. Feet together, knees together. Lift your heels up. Band over the top of the thighs. Pass the band underneath your thighs, crossing the ends, and then bringing the ends up to the top. And then you can drop your heels back down. Okay. Basically, you've tied yourself up. Right. Posture. Sitting up nice and tall. Both knees are going to push apart, and then back in. So we've got this rotation going on through our hips to strengthen through the hip joint and the outer part of the thighs. And as always, symmetry. So trying to make the effort the same in both sides. We're not allowing our strong side to go first and our weaker side to follow. Marvellous. Walk your feet out. So your feet are about um, 12 inches apart. Your knees are together. You sat up nice and tall. Now push those knees apart and back. And again, pushing apart. Just hold it for half a second. Nice and controlled when you allow those knees to come back to the center. You stay in control of the movement. Don't let the band control you. Keeping that posture so that we start to use our internal core muscles when we do this exercise as well. We do it without thinking. Keeping that core nice and tight. Once we think about our posture whilst doing this particular exercise. All right, one more for me. Beautiful, lovely. Okay, so what I want you to do is don't let go of your band. But I just want you to shimmy it just a little bit so that you've got some slack coming into, coming into your band around your legs. All right, so you've got some slack now. It's not completely slack. There's still just a fraction bit of tension. We're going to do some sit to stands. Now, we did this the other day. Um, if you don't want to, do, this is our last exercise. So if you don't want to do this exercise because you're pretty whacked, then, then that's fine. It's a, it's a bit of a tricky one. It's quite an advanced sit to stand exercise. So if, you're not, if you don't think you're up to an advanced sit to stand exercise today, then don't worry. All right. So if you are going to have a go with me, let me talk you through it. So you should be, let me come around here just a little bit. So you should be sat 
on the edge of your chair, as always. Both feet are flat on the floor, as always. So your feet and your knees should be hips width apart, and then you're gonna walk your feet back towards your chair. So when you, the, the, what the band is trying to do, because there is a little bit of tension on the band, the band is trying to close your knees. You're gonna maintain that separation between your knees when we do our sit to stand. And we're just gonna lift the bum just a couple of inches off the chair. So we've got hold of our end of our band. You can, if you want to, still hold in the end of your band, but putting your hands onto your knees if you prefer. I'm gonna hold onto them, onto them here. So I'm gonna sit up nice and tall, I'm gonna lean, I'm gonna press, and I'm gonna lift. And I'm gonna maintain that position, that separation between my knees. I'm gonna lean, press, lift. I'm not gonna allow my knees to come in. So it's just making you think about pushing those knees apart when you're doing your sit to stand. We are just raising that bum just a couple of inches. We're trying to keep our back straight. We're not rounding our shoulders. We're keeping our back straight and we're in control. We're still lean, press, lift and back. We're still pushing against the band slightly so that our knees aren't collapsing in. And you should be starting to feel that through those thighs, maybe even through the outer part of the thighs, maybe even into your hips and your bum. It depends how much tension you've allowed for your band, how hard you are pushing against that band. If you've kept it quite slack, that's okay, I don't mind that. You might not be feeling it quite so much, but if you've overdone it slightly, you might be thinking, crikey, I wish I'd, <laughs> wish I'd give myself a little bit more slack on this band. You'll know for next time. Right, one more, one more for me. Beautiful and relax there. Right, let go of your band. Remove it from your thighs, from around your legs, and just put it out the way. We all right? I think so. Different type of exercises today. Still pretty, pretty full on though. So that's the hard work done. I'm not gonna do any abs today. You'd be pleased to know. Um, I'm going to crack on and do some stretches. Let's do our legs. So, <clears throat> sitting on the edge of your chair. Ooh. No, we'll do that next time. Sitting on the edge of your chair, extend the leg out and point your toes up towards the ceiling. So, let's think about stretching out through the calf and the Achilles. Now, this won't be as in a deep or intense stretch as perhaps you were doing when we were doing the, um, the calf strength and exercise with the band. Maybe next time. Point your toes away so you're stretching through the ankle and the foot. And then pull back, toes up towards the ceiling. And then just relax that foot. Both hands onto your bent knee, sit it up nice and tall, and then gently leaning forwards until you start to feel that stretch through the back of the thigh might feel it through the bum or through the lower back and then just try and relax so try and just sink gently deeper into that stretch if you do want a deeper stretch try pointing your toes up towards the ceiling to really intensify through the back of the thigh don't have to if you don't want to if it's too much for you today don't worry and then gently pushing back up towards your seated position. Change legs, change legs. So calf first of all, by pointing those toes up towards the ceiling, stretching the calf and the Achilles, and then point those toes away, and toes back up towards the ceiling. And relax your foot, both hands onto your bent leg, sitting up tall, and take the weight of your torso on your bent leg, leaning forwards, try and relax, try and enjoy the stretches, importantly. Enjoy the stretches. So slowly sinking down, increasing that stretch. Take a breath out if you think it helps. And for that deeper stretch, if you want to try that, 
point these toes up towards the ceiling. It's just a, a small movement, but it makes a massive difference. So relax your foot and then pushing against that bent knee, pushing up towards your seated position. Right, I'm going to do these hip stretches where we cross one foot over onto the knee. If that, if you can't manage that, if you can't manage crossing an ankle onto the opposite knee, your option is to do this one. All right, where we grab the knee and pull up that knee as high as you can and point the toes up towards the ceiling. So that's your, your option if, you've, if you're struggling with your hips. If you are able to, cross the ankle onto the knee of your other leg. Don't try and tie yourself up in knots. If you can't achieve this easily, don't fight it. Just go straight for the, for the knee hug. All right, don't be straining to try and get yourself into this position. It's not worth it. If you are in this position and you apply a little bit of top pressure to that knee, you'll feel that stretch come into the hip joint. Hopefully you're still hugging that knee if you're doing the hip hug. But if you are crossing the knees, just release that pressure and then just lean forward slightly and you'll start to feel the stretch now through the bum. And relax, so whichever position you're in, both feet flat on the ground, we're going to do the other side. So again, you can either do the, do the knee hug with the, with the pointing the toes up as well. But if you can manage easily, without too much of a drama, cross your ankle onto your knee, then, then give that a go. We're going to apply a little bit of pressure onto this top knee here, and it's literally just, just gentle, gentle pressure, and I can feel that straight away, that stretch through my hip joint. don't want to overdo it literally the weight of my arm to be honest pressing down and then we're going to relax and then we're going to lean forwards to transfer that stretch now further round into the bum and we're going to relax and everyone is going to put both feet flat on the floor right shoulders so we did a little modification on the shoulder stretch the other day usually we would come across, grab the elbow and pull. And you can still do that if you want to. Another option is to reach across, now this spare hand to come right underneath and then try and marry up the crook of your elbow with the back of the elbow, if that makes sense. So rather than holding here, we're gonna try and get the crook of the elbow against the, against the arm. And then we're just gonna gently pull across so rather than stay in a fixed position here at the front, we're just going to gently turn just for that deeper stretch through the shoulder area. If this is all too intense and you want to stick with the traditional pull across, that is absolutely fine. They are your shoulders. You know how hard they've worked today. And then we're going to ease out of that. We're going to do the same on the other side. So either holding onto the elbow and pulling in or for the deeper stretch, trying to get the crook of your elbow cradling the, the other arm and then pull it across. And then easing out of that, relaxing there. Just give those shoulders a bit of a shake. Um, I'm going to do another difficult shoulder, shoulder stretch. So at arm, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to reach around the back of my head. I'm going to try and get the hand um, around the back of my neck or between the shoulder blades. I'm going to try and push up that elbow as high as I can. If you want to, if you've got the flexibility, you can reach right over the top and pull on that elbow. And then we're going to ease out of that. We're going to do the same on the other side. So your other arm, you're going to try and reach down the back of your head or neck or between your shoulder blades. And you can assist that movement just by Trying to point your elbow up towards the ceiling, or if you want to, you can go right over the top and pull on that elbow. All depends on you and your flexibility. And I'm going to ease out of that. Just give those shoulders a bit of a shake. One hand in front of the other. 
and push those hands out to the front, stretching out the upper back and release and go again, so pushing away. Can you get just a fraction further forward? Slightly deeper stretch through that back and relax. Let's do the chest, so hands into the small of your back or hold on to the side of your chair if you prefer. We're going to roll the shoulders back and then allow the chest to go forwards. And release, and again, so shoulders back, chest forward. And relax there. Twist. So one hand on your opposite knee, other hand onto the side of your chair. Sit up tall, using the hand on your knees, that lever to help pull you around. And as always, we're trying to get the whole of the torso to rotate here. So don't just think about your head and your shoulders turning. Think about the lower back, mid back turning as well. And then back to the center, let's do the other side. So changing the position of your hands, sitting up tall, and then using the hand on the side of your knee to assist you as you rotate round. And then coming back through to the center. Give, give yourself some little shrugs, and we're gonna finish off with some neck stretches. So just sitting up nice and tall, I'm just gonna do the usual neck stretches. So we're gonna turn, Pen eyes round, pushing that chin round to look over your shoulder. Try and avoid the temptation to move your shoulders. We just want to move the head. And then come back to the centre, turning the head and eyes round, looking over your other shoulder. And coming back through to the centre. Now I'm going to tilt to just let the head drop across towards the top of your shoulder. Don't be lifting shoulders, just let the head go. And then coming back up, same again across the other side. Think about the head, um, the weight of the head falling across. So you get that stretch through the side neck. And coming back up. Now slowly dropping the chin towards the chest. Try and not round the back or allow the shoulders to drop forward. We want the stretch through the back of the neck now. You might even feel it in the base of your skull or top of your shoulders. And then gently lifting up, looking up towards the ceiling. And gently coming back down. And finally, as always, nice and relaxed, as we rotate the head around. Imagine you are drawing a circle with your chin but nice and slowly. And very gently now, back round in the other direction. And relax there. Give your hands a final shake. And give your legs a pat down. And give yourself a round of applause for today.